It's said about Florida that as you travel south, you're actually heading north. Let's face it, South Florida is basically America's southernmost northern state. On the contrary, northern Florida is basically the south. And then there's the Panhandle, a westward jetting strip of coastline that's too cool to even share a time zone with the rest of the state. And on that Panhandle, sitting right on the Gulf of Mexico is Panama City. The city was purposely named after Panama City, Panama in the early 1900s to capitalize on America's obsession with the canal. But the city spoke for itself with its uniquely white sand beaches and 320 days of sunshine. Over half a million people flocked to Panama City for spring break alone. So back off Nashville, Vegas, and even Key West because Panama City holds the title of Spring Break Capital of America. The Emerald Coast has some of the most beautiful beaches, freshest seafood, and a vibrant nightlife. Whether you're a history buff, need a family vacation, a solo trip, or just want a spring break on the party beach, then Panama City, Florida is for you. Stay tuned to the end for some honorable mentions. Number one is obvious, the beach. It almost seems too obvious to put on this list, but also a sin to leave off. So let's make it less obvious by offering some tips about the beach. We have two words for you, spring break. Panama City has been voted spring break capital of the world. This can be good if you were in college, but bad if you were a reasonable adult who just wants some R&R on the beach. Spring break is such a thing in Panama City that the city has its own website dedicated to the unique events of each year's spring break activities. From about the third week in February to the second week of April, the beach will be full of college students, alcohol, live music, open air concerts, and non-stop partying. Note those dates if you were in college, but especially note those days if you are not. There would be nothing worse than showing up in March with your kids, hoping to have some quiet time on the beach. Another thing to remember is that Northern Florida does get chilly in the winter, but not New England chilly by any means. Floridians will whip out the winter coats when the mercury drops to a brisk 70 degrees. The average winter temperatures in Panama City range from the 40s to the 60s, which is nice if you are from Maine, but not nice if you are from Maine and want to lay on a raft in the Gulf sipping piña coladas. For number two, you need to be over 21 to enjoy. The Panama City Beach Winery is a unique place with tropical fruit wines all made and grown in Florida. They are the only tropical winery in Bay County and really offer you something different than your run-of-the-mill grape-centric vineyards from other parts of the world. The word Florida is Spanish for flowery and was given to its state for its lush and fertile soil. A century before the pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock, the Spanish were growing grapes and making wine in the Florida colony. A winery is not unique to Panama City, after all. Most people will head to Napa if they want good wine. But what makes this unique is the variety of fruits used to create the wines at the Panama City Beach Winery. Come for daily tastings and even enjoy a wine slushy. Their wines are made with 100% fruit with no added sugars. What's on the bottle's label is what's in the bottle. Grab a bottle of wine and head over to number three at Pier Park and ride the Sky Wheel. Pier Park is Panama's epic shopping destination with over 120 shops, an IMAX theater, miniature golf, and laser tag. They also have a huge Ferris wheel called the Sky Wheel where you can get panoramic views of the city. The Ferris wheel lights up at night and has even been used for gender reveal parties with the wheel lighting up in a vibrant blue or pink. Is it too cold outside to be up on a Ferris wheel? No worries, the Skywheel has climate-controlled gondolas for year-round breathtaking views of the beach. If heights are not your thing, then spend the afternoon shopping and dining in the rest of Pier Park. Grab a tiny pencil and putt on the mini golf course. Or if you are traveling with a group, sign up for the mirror maze and laser tag, where you can compete as a team in the dark, shooting lasers at your opponents. There are also plenty of restaurants and bars for those who want a more leisurely experience. 
Number four is all about fun. Check out Shipwreck Island Water Park. Yes, many cities have water parks, but not many tropical themed parks are actually in a palm tree laden paradise. If you're tired of salty water and shaking out sand from your bathing suit, then head to the park. It boasts a lazy river, wave pool, a children's activity center, and a lounge area for adults who want to just sit by the pool and soak up some rays. This is a great option for families or anyone who wants to feel like a kid again, going down huge slides and praying they don't get a wedgie from the treetop drop. The park is only open from April through August, so check the calendar before planning to visit the park. Tickets are $50 for adults, slightly cheaper for kids, and free for kids under 35 inches. Number five is for seafood lovers or those who just enjoy recreational fishing. Charter a boat and don't worry about anything, not even the fishing gear. Or if you bring your own gear or want to rent gear, head down to one of the many piers that are abundant with different types of fish year round. The city's website has a guide to what is biting depending on the month. Catch trout and flounder in the winter, snapper in the spring, tarpon all summer, and Spanish mackerel in the fall, among many others all year. Chartering a fishing boat for four hours costs less than $600, which, split between several people, makes it totally worth the splurge. If you were lucky enough to catch fish or lobster, take it all to the local seafood markets. They will clean and prepare the fish for you on the spot. If you don't want to eat all your fish right away, they will even prepare it and ship it home. If you don't like the idea of living like our hunter-gatherer ancestors, then just check out one of the many seafood restaurants that advertise same-day catch options. Eat shrimp at Buddy's Seafood Market that was caught that morning, or hit up the local steamer seafood market for fresh scallops and crab. If you don't like seafood, it's still worth checking out. Forget farm to table dining. In Panama, it's gulf to table dining. Number six honors the pre-Columbian history of the Florida Panhandle, while still offering a unique place to shop for gifts and souvenirs. Check out the Native Spirit Museum and Gallery. Long before the terms Indian or Native American existed, there were tribes of First Nation people with a wealth of art and culture, including beautiful jewelry that are for sale at the gallery. Archaeologists believe the area to have been inhabited for 13,000 years. At the time the Spanish arrived and colonized what is now Florida, it was inhabited by the Pensacola, the Chatot, the Apalachicola, and the Apalachee. It's a small locally owned museum that also sells authentic native art and jewelry. It is located in the historic St. Andrews neighborhood and showcases pre-Columbian shells, bones, and stones. When there, you can learn about the history of the area before European settlers arrived through fossils, records, and of course, artwork. It is free to the public and a great way to take a break from the beach and step back in time. It is also nice to know you are supporting local indigenous artists as well as artists from around the country. Number seven is the cutest thing you can do in Panama City. There are nine different species of dolphin in the Gulf of Mexico, and Panama is a great place to watch pods of dolphin frolicking around playfully. There are several tour companies that you can book with to take a boat ride out and watch aquatic life in its natural element. Dolphin and snorkel tours and blue dolphin tours are a great place to start. Book anywhere from one to three hours. Traveling in a large group? Then check out the 73-foot sea steamer offering day and sunset cruises. The price won't set you back either. Tickets for a two-hour tour range from $20 to $32. It would be a shame to leave the Gulf Coast without experiencing the ecological surroundings. If you want to do more than just watch dolphins, then number eight is for you. Water sports and adventure. Panama City Beach has endless options for those who want to spend less time in the sand and more time in the water. Take a snorkeling tour, rent a jet ski, kayak, or stand-up paddleboard. For something more thrill-seeking, you can go parasailing, go-karting, and even ride on a human slingshot. Slingshot PCB. There are various companies that offer snorkeling, parasailing, jet skis, paddleboards, and kayaks. But for the slingshot ride, head to Indy Speedway and Slingshot. 
They even have a ride called the Vomitron. The name alone sounds scary. It doesn't just sound scary, it is scary. It's a 200-foot giant propeller with seats powered by huge electric motors. A similar mechanism was used by NASA to train astronauts for spaceflight. The Vomitron rotates riders at speeds of up to 70 miles per hour, putting 4 Gs of force on the riders. To put it in perspective, the human body can only withstand 9 Gs, and only for a very short time. If you survive the Vomitron, then come back to Earth and head to number 9, the Panama City Beach Conservation Park. It's a way to enjoy nature without flying through the air or heading out to sea. The 2,900-acre park offers 24 miles of trails for hiking and biking. The Panama City Beach Conservation Park protects and balances our natural environment, so you can feel good while immersing yourself in the beauty around you. Turn off your phone, disconnect from the distractions of modern society, and spot one of the many species of birds flowers, trees, and lizards. Hopefully just lizards and not alligators. There is a huge range of biodiversity in the panhandle, and this park allows various species to thrive, free from the dangers of human encroachment onto the environment. For number 10, check out Historic St. Andrews. It is the oldest European settlement in the area, and now is a historic waterfront neighborhood of Panama City. There are restaurants serving fresh seafood, nightlife, and plenty of history. In fact, there is a publishing museum that features the works of George Mortimer West and original artifacts from the West family, who are credited with founding what we know today as Panama City. The museum also offers walking guided tours of the neighborhood on Wednesdays and Fridays. If those days are not convenient, then follow the historic walking trail on your own, at your leisure. It is a half mile long and has 10 stops. When you're done, head to one of the restaurants for live music and fish from the bay. Number 11 takes you even closer to nature. Check out Zoo World. At Zoo World, you can book a variety of experiences, all involving the chance to hold, pet, feed, and interact with the animals. The absolute sweetest animal to hold is a sloth. Though not native to Florida, many have been brought to the U.S., both legally and illegally, and therefore they can be found in the wild. The Florida climate is conducive to their survival, so they fare quite well. Sloths are an animal that live longer in captivity, some living as long as 49 years old. Believe it or not, sloths are so slow that they do better in captivity when someone is there to ensure that they eat before giving up on a coconut. But all the cuteness of sloths aside, you can also hold an alligator, pet a capybara, snuggle a lemur, and feed a giraffe. While some of these animals are not native to Florida, we're talking to you, giraffes. This is still a must-see in Panama City. Not to bring up sloths again, but also we are bringing up sloths again. The sloth is actually native to Panama City, Panama, and they can be easily spotted sleeping in trees throughout the city. Number 12 is definitely unique to Panama City. Panama City Beach is known as one of the top dive destinations in Florida, second only to the Florida Keys. The Gulf of Mexico has been dubbed the wreck capital of the South by Skin Diver Magazine, and this title won't disappoint. Book a scuba tour and check out the shipwrecks up close and personal. Some were sunk on purpose to be used for the Naval Dive School training. Others legitimately sank, including the USS Tarpon, which sank in 1937, or the E.E. E. Simpson tug that sank in 1929. The chance to see a moment in history, frozen in time at the bottom of the sea, should not be missed on your next trip to Panama City. This list doesn't even begin to cover all the things we do in Panama City. So here are a few honorable mentions. If you are into military history, check out the Naval Aviation Museum and the Man in the Sea Museum. Given the naval training bases in Panama City, it's no surprise that they have museums to highlight their service. Helicopter rides are also popular, and though not unique to Panama City, the views certainly are unique. Lastly, an honorable mention goes to the Mural Trail. Colorful murals brighten the streets throughout Panama City, with iconic images hand-painted by local and nationally known muralists. Are you from Panama City? Or have you ever been before? Tell us in the comments below what your favorite things to do are. 
Bonus if you've been to Panama City, Panama and spotted a sloth in the wild. 